Dutch Malabar, also known by the name of its main settlement Kochi, was the title of a commandment of the Dutch East India Company on the Malabar coast between 1661 and 1795, and is part of what is today collectively referred to as Dutch India. Dutch presence in the region started with the capture of Portuguese Quillen, and ended with the occupation of Malabar by the British in 1795. They possess military outposts in 11 locations, Alapi, Ayakota, Chendamangalam, Papanivatam, Ponani, Palipuram, Kranganore from 15 January 1662, Chetwai, Kananore from 15 February 1663, Kochi, the 7th of January 1663-1795, and Quillen, the 29th of December 1658 to the 14th of April 1659 and from the 24th of December 1661. The Kingdom of Kochi was an ally of the Dutch East India Company. The Dutch enlarged the royal palace built by the Portuguese at Matancheri for the King of Kochi, which from then on became known as the Dutch Palace. In 1744, an impressive palace, later called Bolgati Palace, was erected on Bolgati Island for the Dutch governors. The Dutch contributed a monumental work called Hortus Indicus Malabaricus on the medicinal properties of Malabar plants. In Kochi, the Dutch established an orphanage for poor European children and a leper asylum on Vipin. Topic: History. Topic: Background. Although also motivated by the lucrative pepper trade on Malabar, the primary aim for the Dutch in capturing the coast from the Portuguese was to secure Dutch Ceylon from Portuguese invasions. After failed attempts to capture the main Portuguese fort of Goa in 1604 and 1639, the Dutch decided to aim for the secondary Portuguese trading posts on the Malabar coast. Dutch capture of Quillen In 1650 s the Dutch possessed only the unfortified factories at Kamkalam and Kananor. They took Quillen now known as Colum, on 29 December 1658, but it was reconquered by the Portuguese on 14 April 1659. On February 10, 1661 the Dutch commander of Ceylon, Adrian van der Maiden, came to Malabar with the intention of displacing the Portuguese, and at Ayacotta he had an interview with the Calicut prince. It was agreed that Calicut, the most powerful ruler in Malabar and an enemy of the Portuguese, was to conduct an attack on the Portuguese fort at Cranganore by land backed up by the Dutch navy. According to the treaty between the two parties, Fort Cranganore was to be made over to Calicut after its successful capture. Van der Maiden dispersed a Nair detachment sent to stop his advance on the way and appeared before Fort Pallyport on February 16, 1661. The Portuguese made no attempt to resist and fled by the backwaters. On March 21, Rijloff van Goens signed a treaty with the local chief of Pallium on a ship anchored off the coast. Dutch forces soon landed and attacked the Palace of the Queen at Matanseri. Subsequently, the Queen was taken as a prisoner. Later in December 1661, Portuguese Quillen was captured by a Dutch expedition under Ridgeloff van Goens. This is often regarded as the beginning of the Dutch presence in Malabar. On January 3, 1662 van Goens was joined by the Calicut army in a siege of Fort Cranganore in the tropical heat. After a fortnight, the fort surrendered the 15th of January, and the Dutch demolished the structure with the exception of the bastion, where they stationed a garrison. A new treaty was now signed between Calicut and Van der Maiden. Calicut agreed to cede Fort Cranganore and Vipin to the Dutch after the capture of the Portuguese fort at Kochi. Topic: <laughs> Capture of Kochi. The Allies moved towards Kochi and marched upon the palace of the Raja on 5 February 1662. The Raja was killed in the subsequent battle along with two of his juniors. The Dutch installed another prince on the throne and proceeded to besiege the Portuguese fort. 
Kochi and the chief of Pallium provided supplies to the Dutch, who faced heroic Portuguese resistance during the prolonged siege. The native rulers of Porca and Sembacarceri kept the besieged supplied with provisions. Though disrupted by monsoon rains and the deaths of the ruler of Calicut and important Dutch officers, the garrison finally capitulated on January 8, 1663. The terms of the capitulation were that all the unmarried Portuguese residents were returned to Europe, and all married Portuguese and Mesticos were transferred to Goa. The last governor of Portuguese Cochi was Inorcio Sarmento. It was said that about 4,000 people were banished and decades of Portuguese supremacy in Malabar came to an end. Fort Cochi now became the primary trading post of the Dutch colony. <laughs> Battles for supremacy on Malabar The alliance between Calicut and the Dutch had no chance of crystallizing into a long-lasting friendship. The Zamorin of Calicut had sought Dutch cooperation so that he might once more recover his hold on the Kochi Raja before the Portuguese arrival, Kochi was his vassal state. Hence his stipulation for the cession of Vipin and reduction of the Kochi Raja to the position of a Calicut tributary in the Treaty of 1662. But the Dutch, having established themselves in Kochi and Calicut, asked them to fulfill their treaty obligations. It was in these circumstances, Calicut welcomed the British and allowed them to establish a factory at Calicut in 1664. The Dutch authorities in Amsterdam were alarmed and wrote to their offices in India to spare no pains to secure the expulsion of the British from Calicut. The Dutch carried off four or five guns from Calicut and attacked Krangenor. The Dutch at once summoned their allies, Kochi, Thekumkur, Vatakumkur, Paravur, Chempakasari and Mangat. Calicut forces, including Moplars and supported by a Portuguese named Pacheco, were at first successful. After a year of desultory fighting the Calicut forces withdrew, and the Dutch destroyed the fort round and built a bastion near Krangenor. In 1669, Dutch Malabar became a separate commandment of the Dutch East India Company VOC, beforehand it had been governed from Batavia. In 1670, the Zamorin of Calicut ruler was persuaded by his prince to go to Krangenor to encourage the Nairs. But, the Dutch made a surprise attack on the Zamorin's camp. Thirty Dutch lost their lives this raid, and in the confusion of the battle the royal sword of Calicut was destroyed. The Calicut ruler fell back to Papanivatum, and the prince attacked the bastion and captured it. In 1673, VOC representative Hendrik van Reed came to Kochi as its commander. He reoccupied the bastion, and demanded the cession of Chetwai, the route to Kochi from Calicut. He came to Port Ponani in 1678 and met with the Calicut ruler. Tired of the hostility shown by most of the natives, the Dutch opened negotiations with Calicut. The Commissary General of Batavia, the head of the Dutch government in the East Indies, came to Ponani in 1696 without even stopping at Kochi. In the meantime, Calicut formed a large anti-Dutch alliance and signed a new treaty with the English. In the following years, they made raids deep into Kochi areas 1701 the Dutch were forced to take part in these battles with Kochi and began to construct a fort for the security of Chetwai. Soon, Calicut sent a force to pull down the fortifications and expelled the Dutch from Chetwai The chief of the English factory had a great hand in promoting this. Calicut resolved to follow up this success by attacking Krangenor and Papanivatum. But, the Dutch under Councillor William Bucker Jacobs retaliated by defeating the Calicut and English armies and on April 10, 1719 the Dutch formally took command of Fort William, as the fort at Chetwai was called then. This Dutch victory was a heavy blow to the English and Robert Adams. The Dutch gradually began to consider their forts and garrisons in Malabar an economic burden, while British East India Company dominance of commerce in Malabar increased. On September 10, 1691 the Dutch transferred Chetwai back to Calicut and reduced the size and strength of their forces across Malabar. The fear of Dutch forces in the minds of the native rulers began to fade. In 1721, the Supreme Council of the Dutch East Indies in Batavia agreed that it would no longer support its unfortunate native ally Kochi against Calicut.
Topic: <laughs> Defeat against Travancore and Q Letters. The Dutch never succeeded in establishing a pepper trade monopoly in Malabar, and were all the more frustrated in their attempts when the young ruler of Travancore, Marthanda Varma, started to expand his kingdom. The Travancore Dutch War that followed culminated in the Battle of Collichel, which proved disastrous for the Dutch. Eustachius de Lannoy, a naval commander in the Dutch army, was taken prisoner and subsequently became a commander in the Travancore army. De Lannoy later helped Travancore to establish an organized army, introduce better firearms and artillery and to build European-style forts in his state. As a result of the Culettas, Dutch settlements on the Malabar coast were surrendered to the British in 1795, in order to prevent them being overrun by the French. Dutch Malabar remained British after the conclusion of the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814, which exchanged the colony for Banker Island. Topic. Forts and trading posts Topic. Religious policy Unlike the Catholic Portuguese, the Protestant Dutch did not try to convert indigenous Hindu peoples to Christianity. However, they helped the St. Thomas Christians of Malabar, who had been around there since the first century, against the pressure of the Roman Catholic Church. They also tolerated the Malabari Jews, and provided asylum. A few families of Sephardic Jews, who had immigrated to the Netherlands after expulsion from Spain and Portugal, also came to Kochi and settled there during Dutch rule. Dutch occupation of the Thirichendur Temple The Murugan Temple at Thirichendur was occupied by the Dutch East India Company between the years 1646 to 1648, during the course of their war with the Portuguese. The local people tried during these two years to try and free their temple, with several futile attempts. The Dutch finally vacated the temple on orders from the Naik ruler. However, while vacating the temple, they hacked away and removed the idol of the main deity of the temple, and took it back to Gaul, Dutch Ceylon. The idols was returned after many negotiations with the Madurai Nayaka. <laughs> <laughs> Commanders of the Dutch Malabar Dutch Malabar was one area of the Dutch East India Company Verenigde Oost Industrie Compagnie or VOC in Dutch ruled by a commander. This is a list of commanders. April to November 1663 Peter de Bitter, Cornelis Valkenburg 1663 to 1665 Ludolf van Kolster 1665 to 1667 IJS Brand Godski N 1667–1669 Lucas van der Dussen 1669–1676 Hendrik van Reed 1676–1678 Jacob Lobbs 1678–1683 Martin Heisman 1683–1687 Gelmer Vosbra 1688–1693 Isaac Dillon 1693–1694 Alexander Wigman 1694–1696 Adrian van Omen 1697–1701 Magnus Wichelman 1701–1704 Abraham Vink 1704–1708 Willem Merman 1708–1709 Adam van der Duijn 1709–1716 Baren Kettle 1716 to 1723 Johannes Hertenberg 1723 to 1731 Jacob de Jong 1731 Wouter Hendricks 1731 to 1734 Adrian Mayton 1734 to 1742 Julius Valentin Stein van Golenes 1742 to 1747 Rainerus Searsma 1747 to 1751 Corin Stevens 1751 Abraham Cornelis de la Haye 1751 to 1756 Frederick Kuhns 
1756 to 1761 Kasparis de Jong 1761 to 1764 Godefried Wehrmann 1764 to 1768 Cornelis Breekpot 1768 to 1770 Christian Lodewijk Senf 1770 to 1781 Adrian Moens 1781 to 1793 Johann van Engelbeek 1793 to 1795 Jan Lambertus van Spall Topic Sources Malabar in Dutch De Volkszeit retrieved the 22nd of January 2013 Topic. See also List of commanders of Dutch Malabar Dutch Salon Dutch Coromandel Notes <laughs>